In these uncertain economic times, you've got to do whatever you can to save money. One of our biggest expenses can be our cars, especially when unexpected repair bills hit. Not anymore. If you own a vehicle with less than 130,000 miles, is less than 12 years old, has a warranty about to expire, or even no warranty at all, you could stop paying for car repairs. Roadside assistance, towing, and rental coverage are all included. Don't wait for the next repair. Make one free call right now to see if you qualify. If your vehicle vehicle is less than 12 years old, has less than 130,000 miles, even if it's out of warranty, paying for car repairs can become a thing of the past. Call us right now and get your car protected before your next repair bill hits. Get protection and no more repair bills. Call 800-696-1030. Again, 800-696-1030. That's 800-696-1030. 800-696-1030. All right, folks, this is Rick Robinson with you. I want to tell you about some friends of mine from a company called Security Enforcement Specialists. When I ran my security agency for 12 years, I worked with one of these partners on a daily basis. He's been involved in this agency now, and with his other partner, they do have over 30 years of experience in the private security industry. If you own a business and you need someone to keep you or your customers or residents safe, then I highly recommend contacting Security Enforcement Specialists today. Give them a call at 405-703-1796. Again, that's 405-703-1796. Again, tell them Rick from K98 Talk sent you. Like I said, if you need the help, they are here for you, so make sure that you uh, go look them up, check them out, and see what they can do. Wrong way! Welcome to the Joe had huge problems with the IRS. I knew it was coming. I hadn't filed taxes since 1990. All the IRS letters coming in added up to a nightmare. It got up to like $68,000. My heart started beating fast. It's like, there's no way, man. I mean, I ain't going to be able to do this. Then they stopped his paycheck. So that's when I started making phone calls and found U.S. Tax Shield. U.S. Tax Shield went to work immediately. They just took the bull by the horns. What blew my mind is he called the IRS right then and there. So why is U.S. Tax Tax Shield A plus rated with the Better Business Bureau? Joe knows. They saved me a ridiculous amount of money. If you owe more than ten thousand dollars to the IRS or state, choose the company Joe chose. U.S. Tax Shield. It was the best decision I made. U.S. Tax Shield is the way to go. Life is good. Thank you, Laura. <laughs> Call eight hundred four seven one thirty two eighty seven. U.S. Tax Shield. Boo raw. Yes. <laughs> 800-471-3287. 800-471-3287. The Internet will never be the same. You're listening to K98talk.com. Whoa. Good God, y'all. What is it good for? Absolutely. Let's get again. You are listening live to the Vito and Vito Show. Disrespectful to the executive branch. I would remind you that extremism... In the defense of liberty, is no vice. Don't sign the damn deal, and the president won't... Therefore, I do not believe that the majority can vote a man's life or property or freedom away from him. And we're live here on the Vito and Vito Show. I'm Vito. And I'm Vito. And you're listening to the Vito and Vito Show live from the basement of the Empire State Building. Check out the website, www.vitoandvito.com, and check it out Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, at Vito and Vito Show. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to let my co-host explain just what you're listening to. Bringing you the perspectives of two college-age millennial conservative libertarians out of liberal hellhole Brooklyn, New York. We're committed to defending the principles of free markets, freedom, liberty, and individualism. Vito, we hold no punches here on the show. That's right. As you can see, we got a little something for everybody here on the program. And being that we're college-age adults. Or just overgrown buffoons. We're going to let ourselves have just a little bit of fun here tonight. That means some sex jokes. That's right. Lots of sex jokes and and immaturity for everybody. (laughs) If you're looking for political correctness, you have come to the wrong show. We might see a few things off color, but, you know, that's just Vito and Vito. That's right. We are not going to quote the Bible, Vito. But we are going to quote some Playboy. And we are going to quote Atlas Shrugs because I love Ayn Rand, and that's what we stand for. Although Vito is a Democrat. I'm joking. Head over to www.vitoandvito.com. Again, www.vitoandvito.com for more information on network listings, past episodes, and our newest articles. The Vito and Vito Show. In Brooklyn. It's nothing but 
The truth. Vito, we got a very special guest here tonight after watching this GOP debate back from California herself. And she didn't bring me a t-shirt. Here she is, Politichick. Mona Salama, welcome to the program. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. I forgot I forgot to buy shot glasses. You, you know, forgot. You know it's my addiction to always buy shot glasses. Yeah, that's forgot. that's it. That's how we're gonna do this. Right, California. We'll, we'll be visiting soon. <laughs> yes. We'll be there. Uh, Mona I swear to God, if these guys would have came to California, they wouldn't be here. It, listen, explain to me first of all, before we go any further in the debate, talk to me about the scenery. How beautiful, beautiful is California? Oh my god, it's so beautiful. Lots and lots of trees. Shocking how these trees survive with so much drought and it's just all green and then you see desert and the hollywood sign oh my god but oh, you can't climb it now it's well of course you i don't think you can climb you can no, climb it before used to, used to but now they have like um drones and like a black helicopter and oh, you get that. caught you're that's it that was vito's dream was to jump on top of the yeah, h me too. That was my bucket list. everybody everybody wanted to do it, but you did see it like you said you had a lot of fun, and we're going to talk about the debate in just a little bit, but I know you were hanging out with some politics. Yes, I was hanging out with my two favorite bosses, Maury and Brittany, from, you know, the show Dallas. Yes, I do. Yeah, and then, you know, politics own Emery, and she lives in L.A. I stood with her the whole week, um, two days, and oh my God, I was in love. Hey, it was amazing. I'm amazing. sure they're great people, and we love all the work that they do. But Vito, listen, we got we had a debate last night. If you want to even call it that, you had some type of spectacle where people were just going off, attacking one another, propagated up by CNN and the liberal media, the communist news network, whatever you want to call it. You tell me we weren't watching The Apprentice last night? It was called the Clown News Network, according to the Daily News. I love that. I got to get that cover. The, the Clown News Network. That's what it was. But it you, was the Clown News Network. But, Mona, I got I to say this. You were there. Mm-hmm. And we're going to get more about this in just a little bit. Because that's what the whole show tonight is about. Yeah. It's all about the debate. And it's all about who won and who's the best and who should be our next president. But when you take a look at the issues and you take a look at the style of the debate, were you impressed? In terms of the structure, did anybody go after anybody? Was it unfair? Do you think it was a good debate? How did you think the structure was? I think this debate, the five-hour debate, because there was, like, no breaks in between, Mm -hmm. was WWE event. And even, you know, the moderator, Jake Taper, said, I'm, this debate is all about fighting. And if you saw the commercials, you know, they made it seem like it was a WWE event, and it was crazy, and um, they didn't control the, um, the debate. All these candidates were attacking each other. They didn't stop it. They didn't tell them, you know, hey, stop, blah, 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 time's up. They didn't have a buzzer. That's why more candidates have more time than others. And if you weren't strong enough to stand up and scream, Jake, 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 you didn't get the time. <laughs> exactly. And and that's something that I, I, I just got to talk about here for a second is that when you see that everybody was jumping to speak to Jake Tapper and everybody else, they just kept jumping up out of their seats. They kept jumping out of their podium. Everybody tried talking to somebody, and it wasn't fair. At the end of the day, you're right, Mona, there was no buzzer. There was, it was completely unfair. And not for nothing, Vito, I just got to say, looking at the entire structure of the debate, it looked like to me people are looking to make Republicans look like the bad guy, the stupid guy, the loser, as opposed to seeing credible candidates up there talking about credible issues. It was like a teacher lost control of her classroom. Uh, the... CNN did pin Republicans back, you know, to go against each other. But some Republicans did not help themselves. You know, you only have a certain amount of time to talk, especially with 11 candidates on stage. They're all jumping in to get into every single topic. You know, you know, you're not going to get enough time to talk. So they made fools of themselves. That's what I think. I think a lot of people made a lot of fools of themselves because CNN can't structure a debate. But I mean, the questions themselves is another issue that I have. Oh, my God. The questions themselves are are, are ridiculous. I mean, it was like, come on. They're talking about who would you replace on the $20 bill, the $10 bill. It doesn't make any sense. Who would your secret service name? Who would your secret service name? I think it's a joke around at the end. Yeah, that was okay. But at at that point, it was already three hours into, well, five hours. But those guys, the 11 guys were so exhausted. You saw Marco Rubio sweating. You saw all of these guys um, dying of thirst. Supposedly, it was hot inside that um, little where the, the bay hole was. I wasn't, you know, they don't let, allow press there. They put us in a tent, but they actually blast the AC for the tent. So it was shocking. They took care of the reporters than they did with the candidates. Well, you know what? I, I think, well, you got lucky. You got mm-hmm. you got the press pass. They don't. But I think when you, when you take a look at it at the end of the day, the questions were structured to pit Republican against Republican. But that- do you, you think that was a good thing? Because I think that's but awful. I hate it when they do that. I hate when they do that too. And if you saw in the first um the kitty table debate, the f- what the first forty five minutes was about Trump, 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 
And then even Pataki was like, come on, the first four questions about Trump. Then they finally got into issues, immigration, minimum wages. Um, what else did they talk about? Boots on the ground with Lindsey Graham. That's how he was able to stand out on that crowd. And then when you go into the, the main stage debate, it was Trump, 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 Trump. And then they finally got into the issues. Well, let's talk about the first debate because that's, that's, that's a big debate that we want to talk about. Vito, who was in the first debate? Recap for the good people at home because nobody's watching the first debate. I sure as hell wasn't paying as much attention. <laughs> well, they said 10 million people came to see the first debate and um, CNN is so happy they got 20, uh, 23 million so they didn't beat Fox. Well, you know what? They should send the thank you note to Donald Trump. I'm, at that yeah. point, I think the man is right. But Vito, who was in the first debate? The first one, you had Centaurum, Jindal Pataki, and Lindsay. All right. So you got John McCain's boyfriend and three other guys sitting up on the podium, and they're trying to talk, and they're trying to corral some support for themselves. They they are polling so bad. Less than 1%. Less than a percent. Vito, what did you think of the first debate? I'll give you my winner in just a little bit, but I got to ask you, the guy that stuck out to me the most, I don't like him at all. I think you should put a D next to his name for Democrat or dummy. Or... I think I'm going to steal my pick. What? Is it Lindsey Graham? Yes. yes I, I, I would even say Lindsey Graham. I think he won the debate. As much as a fool as he was, the ma- or is, the man won the debate last night yeah. or yesterday afternoon whenever they had that debate because I think he really stood out. He was different. He wasn't the type of guy that was just falling in line and saying the same crap. He actually said something of a little bit of substance when he talked about, like Mona said, boots on the ground. In, uh, in the Middle East. And I said, wow, that is a game-changing position because a lot of other candidates, specifically Trump, uh, Paul, Cruz in certain aspects, are not too keen on putting boots on the ground in the Middle East. Graham is taking that strong position of a hawk. And who knows, maybe it might even pull him up a little bit. Right, Graham knows what he's talking about with foreign policy. He's always been strong in that. And you can see what happens when you, when you have less candidates on the stage where more guys have time to talk. I know Graham got a big uh, rise out of the the audience when he was talking about Benghazi when he actually called out Hillary. So I think a lot of conservatives have been looking for that and all the candidates. Well, I just want to say before I jump over to Mona and ask her a quick question, the whole audience in California sucks. I don't care. They are they are le- they are West Coast elitists for the most part because they all were cheering for Rhino candidates. They love the Rhinos out there. Well, it's California. And, and it is California. But I will get to in a second. Mona, question. Speaking of that, mm-hmm. how was the reaction? How was the reception towards Lindsey Graham? Did they like Lindsey? Was he the clear winner in the California debate? Because honestly, I think he put so, on a uh, good... From the reporters? Sp- no, no, not from, from... Well, you were there. I mean, you yeah, saw the audience. Talk to me no, about... No, I actually didn't see the audience because if you look at the structure of the Reagan Library, it's in the middle and the, they put the reporters in behind the, the debate and they had such heavy security. There was so many protesters out there. SCA, um, IU was there. Anti-Trump people were there. Um... The anti Koch brothers were um, mm-hmm. right to where people were there. So you so, had a lot of Democrats you had a watching lot, the debate. Yeah. No wonder it was such a no, happy No, they didn't watch the crowd. debate. They were protesting outside. Okay. And there's a lot of hills to climb, to, I mean, not climb, to get into the debate. It's not like how it was in, when we were in Cleveland, me and um, Vito D, when it was like arena, we could walk, but, and it was right there. No, you would have to like either. Take the shuttle, go up there, get your press pass, take the shuttle back down to go back all the way around. Well, it seemed like a mess, but but you were there for the most part. You, you did get a gist of who, what the crowd liked, yes or no? No. You because, didn't get not a gist at all? No, because the way how they had the um, camera set up for um, the reporters, it was not how you guys saw on the TV. We, during the um, kitty de- um, table debate, we had a blackout for three minutes that they mm-hmm. were started airing the media spin room. And so there was this guy just scratching his head, one of the producers from CNN. Just dandruff all over the place. Yeah, and then, like, <laughs> you see him just scratching his head and, like, reporters are scrambling. They're seeing their tweets are, like, going crazy because, uh-huh. you know, people are having their tweet decks and they see other re- other people tweeting. And for three minutes straight, there was, like, nothing. We didn't uh-huh. know what was going on. Well, well, it seemed like there was a lot of confusion there, and it seemed like a mess. But answer me this. Did you yeah. think Grant, you said Graham won the debate? Yes. Okay, explain to me why he won the debate. He was strong. He didn't go after Trump the way how others did. Mm-hmm. And if he did, he was like, yeah, Trump is um winning right now. But look at um when Perry in 2012 right. was running. He was mm-hmm. 41%. So was Giuliani. Don't um, underestimate the underdog. And he went after Santorum. He was like, yeah, what bill did you pass about the immigration? Mm -hmm. He started attacking, and he attacked in a way that it was actually a debate. I Mm -hmm. would say the kiddie table debate was actually a debate compared to the 
main stage. From what I saw, yeah, I would say that too. And, and I think Vito would agree. I, I think it was much more formal. I thought it was much more substantive and much more informative on, on the kitty table debate. If you want to call it the kitty table or the, I don't know, the, kitty the table. cocktail hour well, debate. Call, if you want to be like politically correct, low tier, or if you want to say what else? The, oh, We're not the politically happy, correct. Happy yeah. hour debate. That's better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Vito, look, you look at Lindsey Graham. And you got to ask yourself this. Is Lindsey the guy that's going to break out from the second tier, from the kitty cable debate, and make it up to the big table, to the dining room? Is he ready to go prime time after that performance? No. All right, great. And we're done. Have a good night. No, but, uh, <laughs> but explain this to me. Well, why not? Because I honestly think he's going to get a breakout spot. I don't know if it's going to be if they're going to put 12 now on that's the main what stage. Say. But what I think they're going to do is they're going to open the opportunity for Graham. And I think it's going to get maybe a little bit more press because he was a little bit more substantive as opposed to the rest of the candidates. I don't think so. I think the only reason why he's more substantive and because there were less candidates at the kitty table. They were forced you to have more of a debate and go after. You know, you're going to ask questions about some Tormin, Jindal, and Pataki. That's it. You don't have to worry about Trump and then 10 other candidates to know all their records well, they and specific They did mention bills. Trump for the first 45 minutes, so Trump wasn't even in the kitty table, and they're talking about him. So he wasn't even there to defend himself or go in Trump mode status and be like, what are you talking about? And start letting him know, like, mm-hmm. hey, listen, I have money, I will embarrass you, and I will destroy you. Well, I mean... Wait, but aside from Trump, if you're in the first, in the main debate, let's see if you're Ben Carson, you... How are you going to turn around and personally debate Bush, Huckabee, Rubio, Cruz, Fiorina, Paul, Kasich, Walker, Chrissy? You can't go back and forth and have a real debate with that many people. That goes to show you that even though we have a gazillion people running for president, the fact of the matter remains when you've got less people running and you have more clear type candidates running and that you have an establishment candidate, you have one conservative or two, and you have maybe a, a, a libertarian running, you get a good Ooh, gist. Who's a libertarian? Uh, no, no, the issue that I'm trying to make oh. is that when you have smaller debate stages and you have more of, of different people all around, you get a better gist of the mm-hmm. situation. You're able to, to, to judge these candidates in a much better light as opposed to what we had at the prime time debate. Look, Mona, Bobby Jindal, I, I don't know. Something about this guy I'm not a big fan of. Maybe it's because of his nose or his, his you know, his mm-hmm. hair. I don't know. I, I don't know. One day he's I a perfect, big fan. like in, um, when I went to defend the dream three weeks ago, he nailed it off the park. He got the crowd walling up. But then, like, in this debate, he was just like, he had some issues, but I mean, to where, me, where did I, he go? I, I, exactly. I didn't think that he carried himself well. He didn't yeah. look strong enough to me. When I saw Bobby Jindal, I saw, I saw somebody who was Pataki in the last debate in that, or, or, uh, or, or a Chris Christie in the last debate where they were quiet, reserved. They weren't speaking as much, and they were sort of taking a back seat. So I wasn't a big fan of Jindal. I honestly think he'll be the next one to go. I think Bobby Jindal's going to be the next one to go, only because I don't think he's going to gather a lot of momentum. I thought it was Christie, but we'll talk about him in a little bit. Mm. Christie actually, look, I'm no Christie supporter, but he did a good debate performance uh, last night. What do you think? With Christie? No. No, no, no. Who out of the four? Who do you think one of these guys is going to drop out? I think Pataki is. You think Pataki's going to drop out? I don't. Where is it? The money. I, like, I, of course. Well, that's another big and issue. And he doesn't get the press. And then when you try to give him, like, press like us, he ignores us because he thinks he's a big shot. But, hey, you were a governor a long time ago, like... That's an attack on Pataki. Yeah. And I firmly agree with that. He turned us down for an interview. <laughs> yeah, so... Did, but... Screw you, Pataki, like I always say. <laughs> Screw you, Pataki. He banned smoking in bars and restaurants. And as a libertarian conservative, I think you should be able to smoke bars and restaurants in Vito's bathroom. But I, I gotta explain this here, Vito. Well, I want you to explain to me, who do you think is the next one to go out of that lower tier? I don't see Pataki going, because I think he's just running for himself just for publicity, to get him, just to stay you relevant. Need money. To... You need money. He'll be there. I, I honestly don't see him dropping out yet. But where are you going to get the money to travel? She, she's got a point, like right. Where are you going to get the money? You know, and Perry I... didn't have the money, but he had the super PAC, but he just said that it was time to cut his loss. He mm-hmm. just didn't want to deal with it. But it was 17 candidates. Had it been like, you know, in 20, 2012, where it was like seven candidates, he would have went... I, I think so too. I think I, I okay. I'm not going to change. I think Jinder will drop a Pataki. I could. I wouldn't be surprised if he goes I as well. I would be surprised if, he, if anybody from the bottom drops. Really? Because I don't Honestly. think in the third debate, I don't think they're going to give uh, these low tier candidates any um, yeah. TV time. No, they yeah. shouldn't. Honestly, I think it's 
almost less than zero. Yeah, yeah I, I, I think it's much. embarrassing to have a lower tier debate. I think if you're going to have a debate, put everyone on the stage and make it equal. But then if you try to give somebody and have a structured debate and a, and a rigorous one, but if you try to give people equal time, it backfires completely. Let's go to the main debate right now. I got to talk about this. Because the winner of that debate, and look, I don't like her. What? You got to do your homework on this woman. Trust me. Carly Fiorina, I'm not a fan at all. But I'll give you this. She won the debate. Yeah. She was strong. She, she came again. out like she knew what she was talking about. And you're right. She won again. She won the first lower tier debate. And I think she won the second primetime debate. Vita, what, come on. Who do you think won this debate? I agree that Carly did. You know, she was very strong. But the thing is why she won the debate, why she was so strong. One, because she did not react to Donald Trump. I think she stayed away from the games. When uh, Donald Trump said she was beautiful, she completely did not react Mm -hmm. when everybody else was getting involved in high-fiving Trump. And also, right now, the debate, the uh, the moderators are asking easy questions on foreign policy. Cauley is strong in foreign policy. She's bold. She's confident. And she tells it how it is. Everybody basically agrees on foreign policy. We have to kill the terrorists and we support Israel. Mm -hmm. And the Iran deal is bad. So she goes on these points strong. And she makes good points, and I think that's why she's doing so well. Well, be careful. There were some candidates last night on that main stage that actually were supporting the Iran deal, and I couldn't understand it. I could not understand it. I said, how could you be running as a Republican, let alone trying to claim yourself as a conservative? Mona, who won the main debate? Vito and I say Carly. Who do you think? I say Carly and Rubio. You think Rubio did well? Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, the five seconds that he had up on stage when he spoke was pretty good. But he was very strong on his foreign policy. Like he knew what he was talking about. It wasn't scripted. Like other candidates, other candidates, you could tell was scripted. He knew exactly what he was talking about. He went down on a point, and the l- minimum time he had, he went straight to it, and he didn't um, BS it. Mm-hmm. He didn't. He saw, he knew what he was talking about, and he's strong on foreign policy. So I would give Carly at, because the way how she just carried herself. She was bold, like Vito said, and she didn't um, fall for that trap that what the moderators were doing, like other people were. Mm -hmm. I was speaking to other members of my family who aren't politically, you know, involved as us. My grandmother, just to say that she liked Marco Rubio a lot. Mm -hmm. So you see Rubio's presence, how he comes off, his characteristics. A lot of people do like Rubio for that. Uh He comes off presidential. Mm -hmm. Uh Presidential, down to earth, friendly, not so out of touch with reality and the American people. And the millennials. And the millennials, I, definitely. I think so, yeah. But There's big support there. You know, but you know who I think uh, did a pretty good job also last night? Hmm. You know who I think did a pretty good job You're also? You're going to say Bush. I'm going to say Chris Christie. Oh. Jeb, get Jeb suck. We'll get to him in a moment. Yeah. I want to talk about the governor from Jersey, Chris Christie. I thought he did a pretty good job, honestly. I thought he answered the questions well. He was stern. And when he had to be funny, he was actually pretty funny. He was the Christie that er- the Tea Party loved in 2009 right. before he screwed up in 2012. And he told him how it was. He was like, yeah, congratulations. You're successful. But what about um, the people who are struggling? What about the middle class? And he was right on. It was got, it got to the point that it was just so overwhelming to, like, cover this debate. And the debate you're going to cover is about attacks on Trump. And it's just it's getting played out. Stop attacking Trump. Everybody knows you attack Trump, your polls go down or you drop out. Let it go. Mm-hmm. He's, he's, how do you say? There's, he has a penetration, like he has like this bubble. You cannot penetrate, you cannot bust this bubble. Trump is wearing a condom. He's wearing a political condom. <laughs> he's just a mess. Political condom? Yeah, that's what I tried. Really? Yeah. But she's right. You got a point. You got a point. The man, you cannot touch Trump. Chrissy did not go after Trump and attack him and point fingers at him. But what I think he did was he focused more on himself. And that's a key. Mm-hmm. He focused on himself, and I think that's what's going to take a candidate to the top. He look at fo- Trump. Mm-hmm. Trump is focusing literally on himself. Well, that's what and look sh- where he that's is. What today. he should be doing. I think he did that well this time. But I think coming off after when you attack Carly, when so people don't care about the, your uh, your record and your you know your resume, I think he just came off as fake. Say, I want to talk for the construction worker at home listening. I'm going to talk for the middle class. It just seemed too fake to me. Nah, because Jersey is all about middle class and construction workers, and. He turned um, Jersey from a deficit to a surplus. Jersey was uh, run by a Democrat for over 33 years, and he turned that state around. There's a lot of issues in New Jersey. I'm not saying he's a good leader, but but no. I think well, his, I'm, his, not, I'm not going to his record. I'm, I'm just saying those moments of the debate just seem too fake, too trying to get the people like, look, I care about you in the middle class. It nah. just came I off too fake to me. I think he just was so aggravated. Like, I, they were just like going back and forth. They're like, I'm not going to hire you. I'm going to hire you. I'm not going to do this. Uh, blah, blah, blah. The bankruptcy. You were bad in HPL. We never hire you. And it got to the point where it was like, hey, what about issues? 
What about what's going on with ISIS, with everything going on? And he really cut them off. Mm-hmm. And he was strong and he was um, firm. He looked like the adult. And he lost weight, and- unlike somebody we know. <laughs> Oh, that's not nice. Mona, I've been working out and starving myself. Mm-hmm. But look, when you take a look at it, Christy was the adult in the room. Mm-hmm. I think he came off as such. I don't think he is. I think he came off as such. He didn't come off as an abrasive bully. He didn't come off as an ass. He came off as somebody who understood the issues and wanted to get to the core root of what a debate is supposed to be about. The issues. And I'm happy uh, to see that side of Chris Christie come out. But the man's a rhino. Uh, we can go on a list about the issues of Chris Christie. But I don't know, Vito, who do you think was the, the second winner? Because I have Carly's my first winner in the debate. My second winner is Christy. I'll save my third for a little later. Who was your second guy or gal in the race? I'll go Ted Cruz. I think I answer. think how well, thanks. <laughs> I think how he came off was so professional and presidential. And when he was talking, you can see how it, it was just him. Nobody else was mattered on the stage. He <laughs> answered the questions perfectly. He was composed and focused. I think that's exactly what he did in the first debate, and that's what he should continue to do until there's less candidates on the stage. One of my only issues with Cruz, and again, he is my pick for 2016, but one of my only issues with Cruz is that I wish he would go after somebody. As much as I'm happy that he's not attacking other Republicans, at least he could say, well, you know, at least I stay. Oh, make it subtle. You need to read his book. I got to give you his book. Yeah, explain this to me, Mona, because you read his book. I haven't read it yet because I'm cheap. I don't want to buy it. I know you're going to lend it to me. Yeah. But I explain to me why Cruz is doing the right strategy. Not not I didn't say attack, but maybe subtly suggest that, you know, hey, guess what? I don't want to raise taxes on hedge funds managers, you know, as opposed to what Donald Trump wants. We'll get to him in a moment. But Mona, why is Cruz not doing attacking, the right thing? Not attacking the other candidates? Right. What why Reagan, is it a, why is it a good eleven commandment. The Reagan okay. I see. I see. I see. All and right. when he was running for senator and um some guy attacked him with, about his like legal issues and his strategist, which is one of his strategists for his presidential, said either we can go and attack and waste all our money or we can do a polling mm-hmm. to find out how much is this negative um, attacks hurting us. Okay. And they wasted that money on that. And then they found out the people who were not affected with that, they went after that for voting. Mm-hmm. So the way how he did the campaign strategy, he actually took Obama's 2008. He read Audacity of Hope. He took that strategy and he put it on steroids. I see, I see. Okay, so maybe maybe there's some credit and logic. And the man's a genius. I, I love Cruz. I just see it because those candidates that do attack, they sort of get flavor. I mean, mm-hmm. Fiorina attacked in a way Trump, and, and she went after other candidates, specifically Trump, and she caught fire. Graham and all these other guys also attacked other candidates. They caught fire. I don't want to – I hope that's not – maybe Cruz can change the game. But right now it looks like you have to attack in order to get somewhere in the pack. Yeah, but look at Maybe – but uh, you see, he now there's a good point. Trump? And he only got coverage for 24 hours because he said Trump doesn't read the Bible because his name is not in the mm-hmm, Bible. Mm-hmm. He got well, those are personal. huge coverage for 24 hours. And then what happened after? Where well, did he go? Well, because those are personal attacks. And I see it's wrong. But again, I, I want to distinguish maybe suggesting that he has a better uh, overall record. But you know what? I think Cruz is doing a, I think he's doing a bang-up job, though, altogether. I think Cruz is smart for staying out of attacking the other candidates right now. You know, especially, obviously, personal attacks. I don't think he should do that. Like everybody else with Donald Trump and everything. But he's, he's waiting for other candidates to knock each other out, to drop out of the race. Mm-hmm. And when there's less people on the stage, when you can actually go after conservative records and what they've done and voting records and say, look, I've done this. I stand on these principles. What do you do? Instead of going down the list and asking each candidate and comparing, you can't do that yet. I think Cruz can go after and go head to head with any candidate on that stage and any Democrat in this country. But when the time is right, it's too much. He's sticking to himself. Focusing on himself, answering the question, being professional, and waiting for the candidates to drop out for there to be less people on the stage for him to focus and zoom in and take care of each candidate that he has to do. All right, but let me ask you this. Is it an effective strategy? Do you think it'll work? I think so. Because right now, like I said, it looks like attacking other candidates is the only shot you got to get somewhere. To get what? To get low polling? Like what Rand did? He Rand went from 7% to like almost 1%. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, you're gonna, you're gonna well he attack. went after Trump and, you know, maybe another candidate. For example, I see a lot of other candidates going after each other who were sort of mid-tier. People went after Rand. People went after, in a way, Jeb. So to me, it seemed like I can go after the middle guys and the lower guys and not so much have to worry about the big see, dog. Rand came off firing immediately 
he just came off unprofessional. Really? In the first debate? The first I, debate? Uh, the oh, first the first, debate, yeah. the first debate, so yes. Overall, in the debates, he just comes up. A lot of people turn off by that. He seemed too wild and like a bulldog going after everybody. So I don't think that helped Paul. But Cruz, yeah, you don't have to jump in and attack everybody. But I get what you're trying to say is suddenly say how more conservative these more attacks with the policy. Right. But I think he's sticking with the silent strategy, focus on himself. I mm-hmm. think that will work in the long run. Because what candidates do you see who are polling, uh, polling lower, mm-hmm. they're going to see in the race. Well, that's a good point. Because look, even Scott Walker, who is in top at 10%, dropped down to th- uh, 2%. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was he was from third, and now he's like, what, 7th? Yeah, he's struggling. He's struggling. He's 10th tenth. Tenth, tenth in the polls. Mona, who was your second winner for the night? I told you Rubio, but my third winner, I would say... Well, Hope. save it, save it, because we're going oh. to break. I want to save it. We're going break to already. break. It's break already. We're having a blast right. here on the Vito and Vito Show. That's right. That's what you're listening to, the Vito and Vito Show. Check out the website, www.vitoandvito.com for network listings, past articles, and our newest episodes over at www.vitoandvito.com. And these superstars are going to be speaking at an event in our own backyard, right? Brooklyn, New York. Listen up. Vito and I are excited to announce the 6th Annual Liberty Fest NYC will be taking place Saturday, October 10th, and Sunday, October 11th, at the Warsaw Concert Hall in Brooklyn, New York. And we're going to be speaking there, Vito, on October 11th. Liberty Fest NYC is a yearly event that brings together speakers from across the political spectrum, from Republicans to Democrats to Libertarians and even anarchists. Vito and I are proud to be a part of an event that doesn't silence folks simply because we got a different point of view. Liberty Fest NYC welcomes dynamite speakers like former New Mexico Governor Gary Johnson, Jimmy McMillan of the Rent is Too Damn High Party, 2015 ACU Blogger of the Year and CEO of War Radio, Wayne Dupree. Host of Adam vs. the Man, Adam Kokesh. And a lot more. Listen up. The website, www.lfnyc.com. Again, www.lfnyc.com. Go ahead. Check out that website for more information on just how you can purchase tickets and be part of this amazing event where we can help strengthen liberty together. Again, Liberty Fest NYC, October 10th and 11th at the Warsaw Concert Hall in Brooklyn, New York, our own backyard. Vito and I will be speaking on October 11th. So head on over again to www.lfnyc.com to purchase your tickets today. Listen, we're going to break. When we return here to the Vito and Vito show, we're going to talk about more about this debate. We're going to talk about our number three winner of the night, and we're going to go ahead and break it down on a report card. Don't forget, forget about our moments and Twitter fan when we return right here to the Vito and Vito show. Hey, kids, let mom help with your science project. This new mom wants her kids' science project to thrive. Too bad she hasn't cracked a science book since 1985. A metathesis reaction? Compound mixtures and elements. Even this baking soda volcano is too big of an experiment. Whoa. Now she's completely forgotten the periodic table. Now she's burning a hole through the kitchen table. Burning with science. But her kids' love for the mom is truly transparent. Proof you don't have to be perfect to be the perfect parent. Don't tell Dad. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of siblings in foster care will take you just as you are. For more information on how you can adopt, visit AdoptUSKids.org. A public service announcement from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt US Kids, and the Ad Council. Who might you save? Your mother, your father, your husband, uncle, and son. Learn fast. F-A-S-T. The sudden signs of a stroke, and you could save. Your friend, teacher, boss. F, face drooping. A, arm weakness. S, speech difficulty. T, time to call 911. F-A-S-T. That's F, face drooping. A, arm weakness. S, speech difficulty. T, time to call 911. The sooner they get to the hospital, the sooner they'll get treatment. And that can make a remarkable difference in the recovery of... Your neighbor, the waiter, grandmother, grandfather. So learn F-A-S-T, the sudden signs of a stroke. Then pass it on, because you never know who might save you. Your wife, your colleague... Spot a stroke fast. Visit strokeassociation.org. Brought to you by the American Stroke Association and the Ad Council. (laughs) 
Key out of the Vito and Vito show. Check out the website, www.vitoandvito.com. And follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Vito and Vito Show. Again, check out the website, www.vitoandvito.com, because we also got a little contest going on. Vito, explain what that is. That's right. Head over to vitoandvito.com, because I know you like free stuff. We all do every so often. You can unleash your inner liberal. Go over to vitoandvito.com to enter your email address to subscribe, to enter for a chance to win a free Art is War t-shirt. That's right, our friends over at Art is War has partnered up with the Vito and Vito show for this amazing contest. We're giving away free t-shirts for anybody who just subscribes to our website. Head over to VitoVito.com, enter your email address in the upper right-hand corner of the screen, and pray to God that you won, because we're going to be giving away these t-shirts. Head over to VitoVito.com for your chance to win, and of course, check out ArtIsWar.us for the best t-shirts and other conservative shindigs that we like. <laughs> conservative shindigs. We're joined here by Politichick, contributor to our show. What else does she do? And She dances, she sings, she's a magician, she pulls uh, rabbits out of her hat. Here she is. Yes, I'm a dancer. I do modeling. Back um, from the California debate to herself, Mona Salama, Politichick. Follow her on Twitter, by the way, at Political Crazy. Again, at Political Crazy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mona? Mm-hmm. We're just getting up to you right now. Mona, who is the third, your third pick in the debate? Because the first one was Fiorina. Mm-hmm. Your second one was Rubio. I Who's would, your third pick? I say Mike Huckabee. Mike Huckabee? Yeah. He knows his stuff. He knows his issues. And he didn't go on attack mode. And when he talks about foreign issues and when he talks about like things going on, especially rel- religious liberty that you were so worked up about, mm-hmm. he was on point. I, I, okay. I think he had a good performance. I don't know if he's number three. Free. But I think he had a pretty good performance because I think he came off knowledgeable. I think he came off charismatic. And I think he's appealing to older Christian conservatives. That's his base. That's who he's trying to grab. No, evangelicals. Evangelicals. Again, Christian conservatives. And, and I think he's going to go after them. He's going to play up the moral majority. He's going to do what he has to do. And he's going to play up a, a sort of older demographic. Is that a pathway to victory? I don't know. I, I like the whole, hey, guess what? I like less money, uh, less well, taxes, and, and less spending. What's he polling right now, seven? He is in fourth place at 6%. All right. Tied with Bush and Marco Rubio. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, what do you think, Vito? Do you think Huckabee did pretty well? You see, I'm upset because you guys keep stealing my picks. I was going to say Huckabee for my third. Oh, my God. So I'm going to stick with Huckabee because he keeps surprising me. Last debate, this time, he keeps surprising me. He's very calm, cool, collected. I mm-hmm. like how he first started the debate, the opening statements. Listen, he's coming off well. He's not doing so shabby in the polls. You know, he's doing pretty good. He surprised me. I'll pick him for my third. I don't know. My third pick, my first to recap, Carly Fiorina. I think she did real well. Number two, I think Chris Christie did real well, too. Number three, Ben Carson. He should be our vice president. That man should be our VP. I think the he's third best. I think he's the third best. He should be sealed up, ready to go. You That's think the guy. He won yesterday's debate. I don't think he won. I said he was number three in terms of winning of yesterday. <laughs> yeah, I thought he came off knowledgeable. I thought he came off like he knew what he was talking about. He messed up so bad on Explain. the answer of Afghanistan. He messed up so bad. Go ahead. He messed up so bad. Explain. I'm trying to remember right now. <laughs> I've been on a plane the whole day. And I will let you try to pick that up out of your yeah. brain. She's but jet lagged. Give she's jet lagged. Break. She's jet lagged. But I will say Ben Carson, I'll tell you why. Okay. Ben Carson to me seems like a type of guy who loves America. Oh, yeah. I, no questions asked. He seems like a type of guy that loves America and he's literally outside Washington. Now, here's a guy, a doctor. He comes across like he knows what he's talking about. He talks about health savings accounts. He talks about more freedom. And that's, those are themes I can get behind. And the thing I like about Ben Carson is that he's not decisive. He's not screaming and yelling and shouting and calling somebody a name. He's, he's sort of taken, like you said before, the cruise approach that I question if it could win or not. I hope we don't have to go about the screaming and negative attacks. We could talk about the issues. And to me, Cruz coupled with Carson is a winning ticket. But more, that's my own personal bias. But in terms of Carson himself, here's a guy that's coming out there, soft-spoken, not loud, and distinguishing himself by being more reserved and quiet. Ben Carson, to me, looked like the intellectual last night. He, to me, looked like the fancy professor that knew what he was talking about. And for that, I got to give the man a pick for VP because I think put him next to someone with a dynamite amount of energy and a fantastic amount of charisma, and you got a winning ticket. To me, that's Cruz and Carson. But nonetheless, I think Carson 
did really well, really well on that debate. And I think it showed, especially when he gave a high five to Donald Trump. <laughs> I think Carson is way too mellow and his personality is not fit for VP. No, but he's likable. He's likable. He is likable. They love his personality. That's what makes him likable. That's why right now the Michigan um, um, Republican primary has him leading over Trump right now 24 to 20. Uh-huh. Michigan. But you, you know who also has a great personality who think make a good VP? Who? Marco Rubio. I thought you were going to... And so does Carly Fiorina. I, thought, I, I think they're great VP uh, candidates. Uh, I Okay, Rubio maybe, Fiorina no. So where are you going to put her as? Secretary of what? To me, when I look at Carly... I see her Secretary of State. I don't want her in my cabinet. I look at Carly Fiorina, the woman supported the bailouts. She's okay with the gay marriage decision and that it goes about the Supreme Court. She thinks it's okay. She's very, very iffy on issues of taxation. I mean, Conservative Review put out a whole list of these candidates, a chart. You can check it out, conservativereview.com, where I know my man Mark Levin, competition, but my man, has, is the editor-in-chief. You can go ahead and check out the website and see the table they put up. And not for nothing, Vito, you take a look at Carly Fiorina. Here's somebody that we should be fighting cronyism, and she supported the bailouts, and she's got a lot of issues. She okay. supported TARP and right. stuff like that. Listen, she's not going to be heading the Federal Reserve. I said Secretary of State. I think I can see her in that position. I don't you know. see you already with foreign policy. Listen, the girl's got balls. No, that's a contradiction. <laughs> <laughs> but I, 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 to me, when I look at Carly, I'm not sold on her. I thought she did a good performance, but I'm not sold. But going Let's back to Carson, because yes. we got a little Carson carried away. I think didn't win the debate at all because he played it safe. He was not like how he was in the first debate. He had so many opportunities to outshine, and he just played it safe. He played it quiet. The same thing with Vito D said. Played it very quiet. Played it very mellow. And um, but that's his style. Is, no, but, is mellow. No, but in the first debate when he actually had time, a chance to speak, he started. He got wild up. Mm-hmm. He was like, finally, and, and he talked the issues, and he was firm on his issues. This time, he was just like, again, this is why I think his mellowness it can be, I, it, it could be a good thing. Use Carson as your VP. That's the guy who should be our VP. He's got to be our VP. He seems strong enough. He seems, to me, he is charismatic, but he's charismatic in a different way. He's not a politician. He comes off as an average American, and that's what I like about Ben. And I also like that he talks about the fair and flat tax. That's pretty cool. A lot of candidates are just talking about raising taxes on hedge funds. We'll get to Trump in a second. And I want it because I'm setting a whole segment aside for Mr. Trump. But I thought it was very interesting. Very interesting to see Ben Carson. I think the guy is a superstar, and I think he'd make a great vice president. Probably better than Marco Rubio, Vito. I don't know about that. Ah. We have a few VP candidates Mm -hmm. who I think would make a good uh, partner on the ticket. So we'll we'll see as more debates go, but... But what? I think it's time for another segment. That's right. It is time for another segment. Let's do report cards on all these candidates. Let's do report cards right now. I want to go down the list of the millions of candidates we have running, and I want to give everybody... On their performance. That's right. I want to give everybody a very, very simple. Very simple. Agreed. Candidate report card. Let's go. Vito. Trump. What do you give him? C+. Plus. C+. Plus. I give Trump a B. Not going to give him an A. I thought he came off well. I think he got hurt. Mm -hmm. I think he got hurt. I think Fiorina actually might go under his skin. I think she found the weak spot and she knew what to hit. I think Trump got hurt in this debate. I don't think he won. And it's because of Carly Fiorina. That's why she's my winner. Because I think she finally found the way to take down the Donald. Whether you like him or not, I think she found the way to find his weak spot. And I think it's a powerful move on her part. Trump, I give a B. Mona, what do you have for Trump? I give him B too. And uh, um. That one moment when um he attacked um George Bush, and he said was that's the reason why we have Obama uh-huh. and not even Lincoln could uh-huh. be, save us, and Bush go, his brother goes well he kept us safe and they got the the loudest audience applause uh-huh. ever uh-huh. so that's what also hurt him too as I, well so I give him a B as well again I think so Trump- he was strong in the beginning you know attacking um Rand attacking Walker and um then he just started dying down. I love what he said about his nickname. He called himself Humble. I can't. I. I. I, I don't know. <laughs> I can't. I can't go anything else. Vito, what do you got for Ben Carson? What do you give him? A solid B. Solid B. Why? As I explained before, you know, I don't see him coming off as the front runner. You know, his poll numbers went up. I don't think his personality, everything, kept up with it. We're talking about Ben Carson before. But what do you give Ben? 
I give Ben an A minus. I think the guy came off well. I think he came off humble. I think he came off himself, and I think he came off genuine. That's what I like about Ben Carson. He's a genuine, honest man who don't give a damn about political correctness, and he says it like it is, but in a nice way, in an intellectual way, in a Thomas Sowell way. That's what I like about Ben Carson. Mona, what do you give Ben? I give Ben a C. He really shocked me. He wasn't. A C. Yeah, he wasn't. He really didn't shine like he did in the first debate, and his. Afghan, his answers to Afghanistan really just was like, it's not going to resonate with these voters. Bush! What do you give him, Vito? Good old Jeb. I'm going to give him a B. Oh, that's more generous than I think. Yeah. I don't think he did too bad. Aside, I don't like the games he played with Trump, the high fives. I don't like the back and forth, the, the bickering. But I think as for the debate, for the policy and the more professionalism, I think he didn't do as bad as people thought. I give Jeb an F. I think he was awful. I thought he was stale. I think he's reciting the same old, same old. I think he lies. I think he's a rhino. He shouldn't be on the stage. He should be joining Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton in October because this man is not a Republican. And he's an example of everything wrong in Washington in terms, in terms of his performance. I thought he was childish. I thought he was trying to play up to the crowd. I thought he was pandering. He wasn't honest. I give him an F. Jeb Worst performance I ever seen in a political debate. Mona, what do you give Jeb? I give Jeb a B minus. He was actually very strong on his um, performance compared to the first debate. Um, he um, drew a lot of applause with his brother, defending his brother, defending how like his brothers, you know, kept us safe. And a lot of people, he got the highest tweet ever with "Sorry, mom" mm. of the smoking weed. So that's gonna resonate to a lot of libertarians now. Ah. I think it was a nice joke. I, I don't know. Rand Paul's got that libertarian vote, yeah. but uh, I don't know. And I don't think any libertarian is going to say, whoa, Jeb smoked weed. I support him. Uh, Vito. But you'll be surprised. Ted Cruz. My man. My pick for 2016. And this is what I hate about this. It's talking to chat room right now. This is what I hate about this debate. They don't give him time. Give the man time. He's a, he's a Reaganite. He, he's everything you want a candidate. You're asking CNN to give him time? Yeah, because CNN you're is... you asking RNC? The RNC would never give Ted Cruz time. Of course not, because they're rhino establishment Republicans, but they'll have Jeb Bush and talking for hours and years. I, to me, Ted Cruz got an A. A-plus, stellar performance. Guy was on par. I think he deflected away from nonsense questions. I think he was able to grasp the issues. And I thought, again, he gives you a sense of hope. Plus his Scorpion ad, check it out on his website or Facebook or YouTube or whatever. Uh, you can find it. He has an ad going around now with a Scorpion. I think it's Don Draper-esque. The guy is a phenomenon. He's my pick for 2016. Ted Cruz, I give him an A+. Plus. I also give him an A. Top of the debate. He's my winner. He stuck to himself. He focused. He zoomed in. He, he, listen, the guy did great. He didn't join in with the, the games and the back and forth with Donald Trump and everybody else. He said what he had to do. He answered the questions. He's waiting for other people, other candidates to drop off the stage to really go after other candidates on policy, not personal attacks. All right, Mona, what do you got, Cruz? I give him an A-. minus. You know, he knows what he's talking about. He knows um, how to talk to the Republican base. You know, Obamacare, Supreme Court justice, mm, uh-huh. you know, how Washington works and how he he, go, he bashes Washington. He doesn't bash the candidates. Um, this debate, yesterday's debate, was all about finding a way to speak up and get in that um, f- uh, two-minute part. And mm-hmm. that's what faulted Cruz, that he just waited there. He was being a perfect gentleman and just waited. He should have just went and after that. And also for not attacking Trump, because mm-hmm. he knows if, if, God forbid, Trump loses or his momentum doesn't last, he's going to get those Trump supporters back. That's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm thinking, too. Trump is hurting Cruz in terms of supporters. Uh, and I think that's something that I made very clear. Vito Huckabee, what do you got? Huckabee, I give him a B plus. All right, Huckabee's a B plus. We're going to speed through this right now. I give Huckabee a B. I think he did real well. Mona, what do you got for Huckabee? I'm going to give him a B minus because where was he? But when he had the time to speak, he knew what he was talking about. But other than that, where was he? Mm-hmm. Rubio, Vito? Well, Rubio, give him an A. Give him an A. I give Rubio a B plus. I think he did pretty well. I didn't think he was stale. I thought he came off well. He came off genuine and he came off sweaty. But he, he knew what he was talking about and I think that's pretty good. Mona? I give him an A plus because with the time he had, no matter what, what you call it, um, he did extremely well. He knew, was knowledgeable. He was to the point where it was not rehearsed. It was not scripted. He knows his foreign policy issues. And I don't know. 
I just gave him my A+. Plus. Yeah, it's the way he's... It's the look in his eyes. Vito, what do you got for Carly Fiorina? A+. Plus. A, won that debate. A+. Plus. I think Carly did very well. Mm-hmm. Mona? A+. Plus. A+. Plus for Carly. What do you got for Rand Paul, Vito? Rand Paul, B+. Plus. B+. Plus. I give him a B+. Plus. I'll go along with the B+. Plus B. In your way, you know, I didn't think he stood out. I think he made some funny jokes. But I give him a triple A for his hair. One side of it was slammed down on the left. The right side it was sticking up. It was a mess. So I give Rand a triple A for his hair, but a B. B plus for his performance. I give him a C. Where was he? A lot of where were a lot of people. He clashed was with Christie against Pot. I liked what he said about right Pot, but I also liked what he said about criminal justice reform. Yeah, I. I agree that's with what that, I like yes, about that. But then when he started talking about the Randio, that's what he, well, got you pissed off, right? Exactly, which is why I wouldn't give him an A. But in terms of one of those candidates that's willing to talk about criminal justice reform, yes, I got to give it a poll. He's at least sincere. He's sincere, and he's done a lot of work in the Senate. For uh, criminal justice. And he jumped in with the 14th Amendment. Hey, you've been reading my essays. I've been reading your essays, Mona. That's right. She writes. Hey, listen. No, yeah, that's my... John... Buddy's in grad school. That's right. She's a graduate student. And I can't even, you know, learn my ABCs. Listen, Vito, John Kasich, what do you think? John Kasich, C. C, that's nice. I gave him an F. Mona? I didn't, I didn't know he was there. What do you I got? Him, I gave him a Z. For his answers for the Randio. It was horrible. Yeah. Like, Really? I guess it's too generous of a C. You think it's too generous? Fail the kid. Fail the kid. Fail him. Scott Walker. What do you got? D? D? Plus? C plus. My God. Where was... C pluses? Where was... I guess. Where oh, was Scott Walker? Scotty. I'll give him an F. He should go next. I don't like Scott Walker. I like Scott Walker, and I'm so disappointed in him. This was... If anyone needed that moment, it was Scott Walker, and... In the beginning, when he attacked um, Trump, when he was like, hey, listen, my records was amazing. And that apprentice joke that he probably rehearsed 100 million times. But after that, he was like, where was he? Mm-hmm. And this was those moments to shine. And he was nowhere to be find, found. I don't know. I'm not a big fan of Walker. Wish he would have came out with a little bit more gist. But to me, he just keeps losing appeal in my eyes. Chris Christie, Vito, what do you give him? B plus. B plus. I'll give Christie a B plus. A minus. Oh, yeah. Mona, what do you give him? I'll give him a B. They gave him a B. All right. Let's go down to Especially the... Uh, the 9, um, the 9-11 uh, comment. I, yeah. He, he knows... He talked... The way how he talks about 9-11, it was like he was the governor of New York compared to Pataki. Mm-hmm. Pataki was like, yeah, I was there in 9-11. Christy, he talks about the aftermath. He talked about um, when he was the first attorney, how his wife was there, how he was paranoid. He, he talks like he was a regular New Yorker that day. Mm-hmm. I think Christy did well. I think he did real well. Let's go down to the kitty table and wrap it up right now. Vito Santorum. What do you give him? F. F for Santorum. I give Santorum a D. Mona? Uh, yeah, I'll give him a Z. We're like... Where was he? Was he? Angry. he was angry. He was angry. They all are angry. No, but they're polling. Graham and Graham put him, in, put him in check. Where do you give Graham? I, for this debate, I will give him an A-. minus. He really outshined with his, you know, jokes. His, um, he knew what he was talking about. His issues and everything. I like Graham. I'll give him a. Uh, I'll give him an A in terms of performance. I'll give him an F in terms of uh, being a true conservative. The guys are right. When he said that, the first thing I'll do is Jake in the White House. I really looked up on TV. I thought you guys were there. I was like, oh my god. They can't <laughs> well, he's not the only one to drink in the White House. Vito, what do you got for Graham? Graham and A. A, you got it for Graham Pataki. I'm failing everybody else. Fail for Pataki. I'll fail for Jindal. Mona for the last two Pataki and Jindal. I withdrawed him. I, he's incomplete. He does not count. He does not, cannot go to my class anymore. That's it. You, you don't get a grade. Oh, my God. That's awful. I'm being that mean. That person. is awful. Listen, it's that time of the week again. That time of the week again. Forget about it. Moments what? of the week. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. Oh, forget about it. That's right. It's forget about it. Moments of the week right here on the Vito and Vito show. It's going to be a lot of fun. This is the moment when we break down some of the craziest moments in politics. Vito, give us that first forget about it moment of the week. Hillary Clinton did a nice little skit with uh, Jimmy Fallon last night as Jimmy Fallon was playing Donald Trump. Mm-hmm. Oh, what a disaster. What a disaster. She, Hillary's no actress. No, she, she's no sight to look at neither. Oh, no. You imagine that face in the White House. <laughs> <laughs> imagine that face in bed. I feel terrible for Bill. Vito, what do you got for a second? Forget about a moment. She's Valerie Jarrett from Black Lives Matter is meeting at the White House. Oh, my gosh. She's meet Valerie Jarrett, the senior advisor of the president, has invited Black Lives Matter protesters to the White House. Unbelievable. This goes to show you the corrupt, racist president administration that we have. This just enables 
the anti-cop sentiment in this country, and it's because of people like this. Vito, let's forget about a moment. This one's the best. Remember D-Ray? D-Ray, who blocked us from Twitter, Black Lives Matter? Okay. Apparently now he's a professor at Yale. I give up. I give up, ladies and gentlemen. I go no further. He's a Black Lives Matter activist. He's a professional protester, verified on Twitter, and now he's a professor at one of the greatest colleges to ever grace the planet. Oh, my God. Unbelievable. Vito, Twitter fan of the week. Who do you got for Twitter fan? Oh, you got a job now. We're giving Twitter fan to our biggest fan, the internship, Sally G. Sal, we're giving Twitter fan to Sal. Good answer. He's Love our it. fan. He's, He's a our fan. fan. Congratulations. Follow him at Sally G. <laughs> it's going up somewhere. And that should pretty much uh, cancel out the Vito and Vito show, Vito, right here. The Vito and Vito show. Check us out at www.vitoandvito.com. This is the place to go for network listings, past episodes, and our newest articles, Libertarian conservative republicans veto where are we going next week where are we going next week values voter summit down in washington dc another road trip guys oh, another be a road lot of trip fun. and kim what's her name davis is going to be there honored by value voters so hopefully we'll get an interview oh listen it's going to be great i can't wait to try to to get in there and speak with uh kim davis i think she's a patriot i think she stands for her beliefs and she's the reason why we have this show in one sense of the word we're here to preserve liberty for all americans and in the truest sense of the word. Vito, listen, before we wrap up, somebody made a very special list here. From the DC Gazette. Okay. Top 20, the hottest up-and-coming conservative stars. Thank you so much. Number three right here. Right here. Thank you. Insanely. Whatever. She's all right. Mona Salama, political chick out contributor, made the list. You mean it's not for me? Not yet. Well, actually, our picture's in there with her. That's right. Check yeah. it out. That's right. It's why she made the list. Really. Yeah, it's why she made the list. It's pretty cool. Listen, go ahead. Let's read what this says here. I want to read a little excerpt because uh, the kid's a superstar. Uh, reporter, political commentator, and columnist for Politichicks, and generally one of the most stunning women in political commentary with a huge future ahead of her. We're pretty sure Mona Salama will soon easily be the next Andrea Tanateros. I think I said that wrong. And the common conservative household name. Congrats to you, on being the hottest conservative chick. Remember, you're bigger than your looks. You're a smart kid. You'll go far. Vito and Vito signing off here. The Vito and Vito Show. Check us out at www.vitoandvito.com. Again, www.vitoandvito.com. It's going to be awesome when you check out our website and enter in your email for a chance to win a free shirt. Go ahead, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Vito and Vito Show. And do us a favor, follow here at Political Crazy. Politichick Mona Salama and number three. I'm going to call her number three from now on. We're signing off here with the Vito and Vito Show. Vito in Brooklyn. It's nothing but the truth. The leader in talk radio on the internet, right here on K98talk.com. When our water heater broke down last month, it was a nightmare. It took five hours for the plumber to show up, and he charged us a couple of hundred bucks just to come out. And then it cost another $1,800 to put in the new water heater. By the time it was all said and done, I felt like I'd been taken. But what else could I do? The smartest thing you can do is get a home warranty from American Residential Warranty. Their home warranties pay to repair or replace all your major appliances when they break. And they will break. And at the worst possible time, call American Residential Warranty right now for free information on home warranties starting at just pennies a day. Don't wait for your refrigerator to stop running or your ceiling fans to stop turning. Call American Residential Warranty right now. Ask how you can save up to 50% on wash and dryer coverage. Just call 1-800-513-6154. That's 1-800-513-6154. Again, 1-800-513-6154. Call now. Hey folks, Slickery Trigger here. I'd like to take a minute to tell you about Rebel Road Tactical. As a defensive pistol instructor, I've had the opportunity to observe many different holster designs and configurations. 
And one thing is clear, many of my students won't carry a pistol. Or worse, they'll carry one without a holster at all. Holster designers aren't making holsters for normal people. It seems that most holsters are either an expensive piece of gear designed for Rambo or a piece that doesn't fit or function the way real people need it to fit and function. So, like any good Texan, I decided to learn to form Kydex and design one myself, one that would fit the needs of average people. The result is the Rebel Road Tactical CRT Modular. The CRT stands for Carry, Range, and Training. Its thin and lightweight curved design minimizes printing and is adjustable to fit just right for superior comfort and function. Check us out after the show at rebelroadconcealed.blogspot.com. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. 